All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're talking about social anxiety. We're talking about event photography, two things that don't go well together, but they do come up from time to time. So let's talk about how to eliminate or reduce the amount of anxiety you have so you can perform your job as an event photographer. Now, before we get into these tips, I wanna let you know that I am somebody that suffers from, in the past and present, social anxiety. It is something that I am constantly dealing with. The tips that I'm about to share with you are just tools that I use to help me get through the events, to show up to them, to perform the, to the best ability that I can. Uh, I know there are all different levels of anxiety, social anxiety, and I wanna let you know that I have seen a therapist in the past they're the ones that have helped me develop these tools that I'm about to share with you. So if you feel like you need more help than what I'm about to share, then by all means, go see a therapist. They are super helpful. I cannot recommend that enough. So let's jump in with tip number one, and this is gonna require a little bit of visualization, but it is pretend that the event space is your living room. So. Before you get there, imagine you're just going to your living room. It's a comfortable place where you are just about every day. You spend time there, you watch TV there, you feel really relaxed. Imagine you're just walking into your living room. Imagine there's people in your living room that you don't know. You would probably welcome them. Hopefully you welcome them. I guess it depends on the level of your anxiety, but this has helped me a lot in the past. So imagine you're in the living room, you would approach every person, you'd wanna to talk to them, you wanna make them feel welcome. So when you're shooting an event, you don't actually have to make people feel welcome. You do wanna send out good vibes in the direction, you do want to make them feel comfortable uh, with you photographing them, but you do not have to make small talk, you don't have to engage very much. You can make your small exchange of creating a photo with them in it, and then moving on to the next guest. So visualizing you're in your living room, visualizing that this is your safe space, that you are there uh, as kind of a host, that allows, that gives you the freedom in your mind to just move through the party and kind of talk to everybody. So there is no unsafe space in your event space that you can't go. You can go every single corner of that event and you should uh, without any fear or anxiety that you're not welcome. Okay, so tip number two, this is if the living room thing didn't work and you feel your heart rate start to rise and you just kind of, you feel your anxiety come up, uh, you feel your chest start to kind of tighten up. It's a breath work technique that I've learned in the last year, it's called box breathing. So what box breathing is, is it just calms your central nervous system down, you inhale for four counts, you hold your breath for four counts, exhale for four counts, and then hold that exhale for four counts, and then repeat, so it's four, 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 four. Do this for eight to 12 rounds, and you'll notice that your heart rate comes down, you will feel more comfortable, the anxiety will go away, stand still, just look around the room, see that nothing crazy is happening, and go back to work. Uh, this happened to me recently, I had a slow week, so I wanted to practice some street photography. I went out to Venice Beach, and I haven't really practiced much street photography, in the recent years. So I got out to the boardwalk, I was ready to you know, go take some cool photos and then I see a wave of people and then I hear a drummer and then I, it's just, there was a lot to take in. So I was under kind of sensory overload. I could feel my heart rate increase. I could feel my chest start to, <laughs> chest start to tighten. The drums that I was hearing was making it worse. So I started the box breathing and then I stood still, looked around. I took a couple photos. They weren't really that good, but I moved into the space as if it was my living room and I slowly but surely felt more comfortable and started creating photos. So it still happens to me. This was just this week. Um, it still happens. 
but using these tools just definitely helps reduce the amount of anxiety that I ex was experiencing and it can help you reduce the amount of anxiety that you'll experience if you're experiencing it. Okay, so moving into the next tip and that is the fact that the attention isn't really on you. So you walk into an event, you're there to photograph it, document it, you are not there to entertain anybody, you're just there to make people feel good by taking their photo, making them feel important, uh, that takes a lot of the heat off of you. If you know your camera inside and out, then you are in a good place because you're not worried about your settings, you're not worried about any other insecurity, you're just there to capture the moments and if you wanna show people the back of your screen, that also, you know, sometimes that can backfire if they're not happy with the way they look. Uh, so I don't recommend doing that every time, but once in a while, if it's a great photo, show them the photo. So just remember, it's not about you. Any uncomfortable situations, like maybe you get rejected, if you ask somebody to take a photo of them, you, never, you don't know what they're actually going through. So maybe have some empathy for them instead of taking it personal, because a lot of times rejection isn't really personal. It's just that they don't want to be photographed. They might have lied and said they were supposed to be somewhere else and they don't want to be documented. You don't really know what, uh, why you're going to get rejected for taking a photo. If you ask, if you don't ask and you just take a photo and then somebody asks you to delete it, uh, that's happened to me before, but, uh, this is one that I got from my friend and former client named Russell Brand. He is a stand-up comedian performing for thousands of people. Um, I asked him, how does he deal with the anxiety of performing in front of so many people? He would go on stage and you know, there's just a wall of people screaming at him. And he just told me to use your anxiety as fuel. I know this is easier said than done, and I still am practicing this one every time I get anxious, uh, but the things that he told me is just that you're able to think faster, you're able to move faster, so your thoughts come to you quicker, your reflexes move faster, so if you're applying that to photography, you're able to dial in your settings, you're able to notice more things, you're able to notice people, their reactions, um, use your anxiety to your advantage, use it as fuel. I don't recommend fully using anxiety as fuel for everything, but try to harness it. Don't really run away from it. If it's coming on and you have no control, you're gonna get anxious no matter what, then think of it as a tool and use it as a tool. Oh, I have one last thing that I want to share with you just because, uh, so pre, consumption of substances before shooting an event. One being caffeine. Coffee is definitely a stimulant that can cause anxiety. So if you are noticing that you have a lot of anxiety, try to limit the amount of caffeine intake that you take right before the event. I don't usually drink coffee before. If I have it, it'll be in the morning. And then I know that, you know, based on the last tip, I'm gonna get anxious and then that anxiety is gonna give me a little bit of fuel so I don't need any extra caffeine to give me energy to get into the event. The other one is consuming alcohol before an event. I usually, as a rule, just don't consume alcohol. I know if you're just going to a party and you're attending, then it's a great way to loosen up. It's a great way to take the edge off to get rid of whatever anxiety that you might have. But if you're there to do a job, you eventually, the alcohol that you take before the event will start to wear off and then you get tired. And if it's a long event, then being tired isn't such a good thing. Um, a way to get more energy if you're using alcohol is to have more alcohol, but then if you keep doing that throughout the event, then by the end, you might not even be able to use your camera. So I think abstaining from both caffeine and alcohol I typically, during an event, I won't even drink if it's offered to me, even at the end. By the end, I really just wanna go home and unload all my photos. So I, if I'm gonna have a beer or something, it'll be 
in front of my computer while I'm transferring all the files and then I'll probably be exhausted and just have to go to bed. So next, check out the beginner's guide to event photography. It gives you five great tips on shooting events and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.